as storage systems start to scale and data centers start to scale, we start to look for ways to really guarantee quality of service and performance to critical applications. And there's a lot of ways that vendors have tried to solve that, but ideally what you'd want is the ability to assign controllers on the fly to an application and then capacity on the fly to an application. Then if you needed more, you could just assign more uh, controller power to it and then it was done, you could just release it and things would work like that. So the challenge though is that's not where we are today. So I've invited Sundip Aurora, he's with Cam and Ariel, and we're gonna walk through some ideas on how you might solve that. Thanks for joining us today, Sundip. My pleasure, George, thanks for having me. So on, on this side, we've got the all flash array, which is kind of where we are, if you will, state of the art today, but it's really kind of a confined unit, right? It is, confined unit which comprises of storage controller, compute, memory, capacity, software, all bundled together in a tightly integrated unit. And very hard to divide that up and, and assign critical capabilities to these applications, right? That's right. Then on the other side, sort of we've got the opposite problem, right? We've got infrastructure as a service, so probably best represented by guys like Amazon and Google and those guys. And that we can divide up like crazy, but then I can't get the performance that I need over here, right? Exactly, performance and efficiency at scale. Now you guys are working on something called composable storage that really attempts to solve this. Why don't you walk us through that? Yeah, I'd love to. I think the whole idea of composable storage came to us when we looked at what NVMe and NVMe or fabrics provided. So let's uh, back up and let's talk about NVMe for a second for the sure. viewers. So NVMe is a new protocol essentially that replaces SCSI, right. much more efficient for solid state. It does. It does what solid state was meant to do in terms of provide the kind of performance to applications that are in the cloud scale or, or as a service world. A lot of our viewers might not be used to NVMe over fabric, so yeah. what's that? The NVMe, the protocol which was finalized last year, mm -hmm. is a way to access uh, SSDs. Uh, uh, unlike SCSI, it provides uh, multiple lanes, so it provides much better uh, access rates. What you can do is extend that over your fabrics. Uh, NVMe over fabrics, NVMe over fiber channel now uh, applies the same kind of protocol to the back end and the front end layer over time. The idea is now you have a very low latency, high speed network so that the network is no longer the bottleneck. And if you think about it, we've kind of done this before. That's what's essentially what we've done with Fiber Channel and iSCSI by putting SCSI over it. We're just now going to move NVMe over that, that connect, right? Exactly, over PCIe that too. Yeah, exactly. So then now you guys have taken that so and, and kind of crafted this composable storage idea, right? We have. So we looked at what NVMe provides in terms of benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly there are performance benefits, right? So when you look at NVMe and then NVMe over fabric, you see that you can get about 20% uh, uh, performance delta or existing uh, non-NVMe SSDs, 2D9 SSDs, which are connected through SATA or SAS. So that's, and that's just the improvement of the protocol itself, right? Improvement of the protocol, exactly. Yeah. We saw that and we said, that's really good. 20% is great, uh, but what does it really give us in terms of an opportunity to redefine how a storage area was built? So right. we think, uh, somewhat dramatically, that the storage area as it exists today will fail to exist in the next five years. Wow, okay. We think the, the storage array, all flash arrays, you know, will essentially be a collection of resources or an NVMe mesh. Okay. A cluster of NVMe fabric that has compute resources, controllers, has memory, has capacity resources, all of them over this high speed network that they can be dynamically uh, resourced for applications as you as you mentioned. So basically my, my mesh here, the behind the scenes there could be NVMe. As exactly, so if I were to draw this out, right, so this is my mesh of NVMe. This is my NVMe mesh, and this is uh, either over fabrics or over fiber channel, right? Okay. You have a variety of different resources connected to this mesh. Right? You've got your hosts, which could be connected to this, or they could still continue to come through fiber channel or iSCSI. Mm -hmm. You've got your compute nodes that can be connected to this. This is, I'm talking about storage compute. The control is essentially okay. the active active controllers that exist today. Sure. You've got your capacity nodes that are connected to this as well. And capacity nodes are nothing but shells of NVMe SSDs. Okay. Yeah? So when you do that, you've got your host, your compute, your capacity, more host. What you've done is you've created this really flexible mesh where according to your picture, I can draw dynamically composed resources for app one, and another set for app two. And then as and when the need arises, 
I can scale these out. I can add two more capacity nodes to it. I can add a few more controller nodes to it if performance is the need. I can continue to do that in both a scale up and scale out manner, mm -hmm. but more importantly, I can do that in a scale in and scale down manner. Now you take those benefits and you apply them to doing this in an instantaneous fashion, uh, within minutes. Now you're coming closer to the paradigm of infrastructure as a service. Right, it almost becomes sort of a self-service uh, capability at that point, right? Exactly, and all of this is, is because we have got a, this, this really low latency, high speed backend connectivity cluster. And uh, there's two things I really like about this. Number one, it, it's one of the best guarantees of service that I've seen, right? right? You are physically dedicating essentially for a period of time a set of controllers directly to that application. Precisely, so what it does is it allows you to have service level, uh, SLAs and quality of service, which mm -hmm. uh, can now be orchestrated and defined based on analytics. So what we did last week is we announced two products, the K2.n and Flex. Now the K2.n is essentially our NVMe converged storage array. Okay. Right now we've got a K2. Uh, Gen 6 product, which mm -hmm. is built of uh, a software-defined platform. Right. It uses Vision OS, which is a collection of uh, enterprise-ready production data services, mm -hmm. data reduction, uh, data protection, snapshots, and so on and so forth. It runs today uh, with an InfiniBand cluster. It can scale out or scale up. Okay. Uh, it's got uh, drive shells of SSDs, 3D9 SSDs, that you can add in 24 drive at a time shells. Mm -hmm. You can go up to four shells per K2. You okay. can add multiple nodes and you have a large cluster of a scale-out storage array. Okay. When we move to NVMe on the back end, now we break the SCSI, the SATA and the SAS connections, and then the inter-node connections with InfiniBand, and we move to a converged uh, NVMe over fabric back end, which connects NVMe SSDs in the shells. Okay. That's our first goal is to, to have that, and, uh, and then your granularity of uh, scaling becomes a single controller. Right. So you can add one, two, three, four, X number of controllers yeah. uh, in a ratio of X number of drive shells. You okay. can have 10 controllers and only one drive shelf if really what you need is performance, or you can have one controller and 10 drive shells if what you need the is capacity. capacity, right? Okay, makes sense. That makes sense. Now we thought to ourselves, what is next? If once you have that, once you have the ability to have granularity of expansion both on the control and capacity side, we thought of adding an orchestration and an automation layer to it. Okay. What does that look like? We have uh, our Clarity product, which collects, it's a cloud-based product that collects millions of data points across mm -hmm. our entire um, call home database. Right. And it does uh, what we call prescriptive analytics on it. It looks at uh, trends and patterns of access, and then it defines to the user optimization levels that they can do to have better performance or better utilization on the storage. Okay. We take that and merge that with some orchestration tools, which allow us then to automate building yeah, of these, what we are calling virtually private arrays. These okay. are composable arrays that can be dynamically composed in the fly. I can move resources between these uh, VPAs, and essentially, I'm creating my composable infrastructure layer at the storage site. Gotcha, and so then basically, at that point, it automatically responds to peak needs and things like that. Exactly. Very interesting. So what I really like about this, the other thing is that you guys are really the first guys I've seen do more with NVMe than just put NVMe drives, which I think is you know where a lot of guys are just starting as a default. You guys are really taking advantage of this fabric idea right. and making this sort of mesh opportunity for customers. I think it's a really great idea. So before we leave though, why don't you tell the folks that might not know about Caminaria who you guys are? Yeah, sure. So Caminaria is an all flash storage company. We are in the sixth generation of our product. It's called K2. Like I said, it's a scale up and scale out all flash array, which has enterprise production ready data services. Uh, all our IP is in the software. So we okay. use best of breed commodity hardware. We write the commodity curve. We bring it all together in a nicely defined supported uh, storage array. Uh, it is one of the most powerful storage arrays, all flash storages in the market. And what we've done essentially is said that while we'll continue to evolve and innovate on our existing Gen 6 platform of the K2, we will also invest in building this next generation of composable storage architecture. The K2.n and Common Area Flex are products which are uh, slated to be released. Um, K2.n is slated to be released in the first quarter mm -hmm. of 2018. Okay. And then uh, Common Area Flex, which is the orchestration and dynamic analytics layer, will be uh, released in uh, the second half of 2018.
Great. Well, Sandeep, thanks very much for joining us. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, George. Thank you for having me. So there you have it, composable storage, uh, something really to keep an eye on in the future, really going to give you a really high levels of quality of service uh, capabilities.